Making a color legend. What is that orange cluster on the left? Well, I really couldn't tell you because I don't know what orange means. This is why we need color legends. X has the x-axis. Y has the y-axis. Color has the color legend, which is very similar to an axis, but it's just a listing of, you know, which colors mean what. So let's go ahead and add a color legend to this here scatter plot. I'll start by forking this one and changing the title to scatter plot with color legend. Let's take a look at the overall approach that we're already using. We define the scales here and then inside of our SVG element we put the axes, the axis labels, and then the marks. Here's what I'm thinking for our approach. Just in the same fashion that we're putting the axes in place, we can have another component that's kind of like an axis component called color legend. And we can just put that in our SVG along with our axes and our marks. Right before our marks component here, I'm just going to put color legend, a component that doesn't exist yet. Let's make this exist by importing it from dot slash color legend. That file also doesn't exist yet, so let's make a new file called color legend.js. And in this file, let's export color legend, which will be a function that returns, well, let's stop and think about this. What is it gonna return? Well, it has to tell us what the colors mean, so I'm thinking, it could be a collection of mappings where maybe we have little circles that are colored and then next to each of those circles it says what species iris flower that color of circle represents. So we'd have one circle for Setosa, one circle for Virginica, and one circle for the other one. To make that happen, first we need access to the color scale. And before I forget, I'm going to pass that in from index.js to our color legend component here. We can say color scale equals color scale. And let's just review how we created color scale. Here's the definition of color scale, where the domain has all the unique values returned by our color value accessor, which returns the species. And the range has these three colors. And just as a reminder, color scale itself is a function that takes as input a value from the domain and returns the corresponding value in the range. So we can use the domain of the color scale to get at this list of things that we need entries for. Over in colorlegend.js, we can access color scale.domain like this, and this should return an array of those species, and then we can use dot map to produce something for each one of these values. I'll call it domain value, because that's really what it is. And just for a sanity check at this point, I'm going to say console.log domain value. What should we expect at this point? Well, I would expect Setosa, Virginica, and that other species to be printed out. Oh no, a syntax error. Export color legend. Oh yeah, I forgot to add const. So if I put const there. All right, we get these three different species printed out. All right, so far, so good. For each of these species, we're going to want to have a circle and a text element. And we're going to want to have three of these going down the page. So here's what I'm imagining the structure of this could be. For each of those pairs, we could have an SVG group element. That way we can translate the group elements and everything inside will move with it. And then inside of each group element, we have a text element and a circle element. So first, let's make our group elements. In this function here, we can just return a group element. And then inside of each of these group elements, we can put a circle element and a text element. 
and the text, this is where we should put the domain value. This is going to be our label. And then for each circle, the main thing that we have to be concerned about is the fill, the color of the circle. And that can be color scale of the domain value. That should give us a value from the range, namely a color. All right, let's see, did this uh, work? Did this do anything? All right, we've got some text up there. And we don't see the circles because they don't have any uh, radius. Let me start by getting some separation between these text labels. For that, we can set the transform on the group element to be translate zero in the x direction and something in the y direction to move it down. But what should we translate it by? Well, I think uh, we can use the index in the array here by accepting a second argument, i, in the callback that we pass into dot map. This i will be an index uh, from 0 to 2. So we can use i and then multiply it by something, let's say 100, to get some space. Now it's versicolor, you know, setosa. They're spread out like this. Rather than hard coding this, I'll give it a variable name. Let's say tick spacing. And we can accept a new prop called tick spacing and give it a default value of, I don't know, 20. All right, now we've got these three spread out like that. In order to see the circles, we need to give them a radius, an R attribute value. And let's call that tick size. That can be another prop with another default value of, I don't know, 10. All right, we've got the essence of our color legend. See that? Make it full screen. We've got circles and labels. From here on out, all we need to do is clean it up. And by clean it up, I mean make some space, I'm thinking on the right for this, and make these nicely styled, as in vertically centered. Maybe the text could be the same as the uh, tick labels for the axes. And maybe we can give it a label, like species. Then the color legend would be complete, and you could read the visualization, and you would know the answer to what is that orange cluster on the left. And the code itself could, and dare I say should, be simplified. Let's get rid of this intermediate console.log. And since we're just returning this thing, we can omit the return statement and also omit these curly braces for a cleaner dot map invocation. And we can do the same for the component itself, since it doesn't really need a body, it's just returning that one thing. Now we're left with this relatively cleaner formulation. All right, now let's clean up the external appearance of all this. First of all, I think I'd like to make room for this color legend on the right. And to do that, we can just tweak our margin. Namely, we can set the right margin to be some big number. Let's try 200. And then we can move that color legend over by putting it inside of a group element. I think this might be the simplest way to do it. And we can set the transform to be translate and then we can just put it in position. The sort of baseline position where it should be is on the right. And so we can leverage inner height, which we do have access to, or sorry, inner width, rather. All right, translating by inner width moves it over. And then I'll just add some padding, I don't know, 50. Now we can start adjusting the spacing and the positioning of the text. One thing I don't like right now is it's not really vertically centered correctly, but I believe we got the vertical centering right with the y-axis ticks. Maybe let's copy some of that logic from axis left. This was the trick, setting dy to this magic number that we found in d3 axis. In color legend, we can just set the same on our text here. And now, look at that. It's vertically 
centered. All right, sweet. One problem now is that the text overlaps with the circle. So let's move the text over to the right a little bit. We can do that by setting the X coordinate of our text to be, I'd like to set up a new variable here, maybe tick offset or tick text offset. And we can accept that as a prop and give it some default value. All right, now the text is farther away. Now we can get into some fine-grained tweaking by setting these prop values from index.js. So here's our color legend. I'll just format those nicely. And now we can get into some subtle details. Like we can increase the spacing a little bit. But actually, I think it would be cool if these circles were the same size as these other circles. And what size is that? We're passing 7 as circle radius to marks. But to use the same value across marks and color legend, I think I'll introduce a circle radius variable and define that, I don't know, somewhere up here. Const circle radius equals 7. And then we can pass in circle radius to our color legend. Circle radius equals circle radius. And in color legend, I don't believe that was a prop. Oh, it was called tick size. Tick size. Right. So in index.js, instead of circle radius, let's specify tick size to be circle radius. All right, there we go. Now we can tweak the text offset and the tick spacing. Now I think we're in a good position to add a big label that says species. That can kind of look like these labels here. And how did we make those? Well, we just have these text elements. So I'm going to copy that, paste it over here. And now it's inside our group element. I'm really not sure right now what X and Y should be, so I'm going to delete that logic there. And now, see, we get this nice label over here. It says petal length. That's wrong because it's using x-axis label. I'll change this to be color legend label. And then we need to define that. Let's define it here next to color value. Const color legend label equals species with an uppercase s. All right, there it is. And then we can just tweak the transform of that group element and the relative position of that text label. The very last thing I'd like to do is make sure that these are styled the same way as these. The black is a bit jarring. We can do that with CSS, I'm pretty sure. In our CSS, we're giving this style to tick text. I think the only thing missing is that these don't have a class of tick, but maybe they should. In our axes, we're giving our group elements a class name of tick. We can do the same in our color legend. Right here, I'll just add class name equals tick. And there we go. They have that nice, subtle gray color. To recap, we've added a color legend with the following code. Our text label that says species using just the same approach as the axis text labels, and our brand new color legend component. Both of these are inside of this group element, so this transform controls the position of this whole thing. We pass some constants to our color legend and also the color scale. Inside of colorlegend.js, we unpack those props, and then for each entry of the color scale domain, we create a group element with a class name of tick that's transformed down based on the index of the array and our tick spacing. Each one of these contains a circle whose fill color is determined by passing the domain value through the color scale, which returns a color, and whose text is the domain value itself. That's how you can add a color legend to a scatterplot.
That's all for Making a Color Legend.